you're going to have to look at where the wears happened because it may change. Oh, we took this spot away, so, you know. Okay. Um, this is the obeyus definition of bullying. Um, and I know it's yellow, and sometimes yellow is hard to see, so I am going to read it. Bullying is when somebody repeatedly and on purpose says or does mean or hurtful things to another person who has a hard time defending him or herself. So bullying isn't necessarily just doing a mean thing to someone. It's repeated, and that other person doesn't have the ability to defend themselves. You know, um, and I think that's really important. It involves aggressive behavior, but aggressive behavior does not have to be physical. It can be those mean, hurtful words. It can be posting that stuff on social media. And that's a whole other ball game. But it doesn't have to be tripping, punching, hitting, that kind of stuff. It's just aggressive. And it typically involves a pattern over a period of time. So it's repeated. And there is an imbalance of strength or power. I always say bullying is a, uh, it's about power and control. So, but they tend to, you tend to be able to see that it's, it's off. It's not the, the kid that can fight back, the kid that can, can stand for themselves. That's not typically <coughs> bullying. A parent might think that's bullying. But if their kid can stand up and, and, hey, back off, that's not the same thing. Um, <coughs> it's important that we and the kids and parents can distinguish between bullying, what is real bullying, rough and tumble play. Kids are tough. You know, ask anybody that has two kids at home. They're pulling their hair out because these kids are going at it and these are siblings and they're love each other. So then you put kids into this thing where we have some rough and tumble play. Kids have known each other and they know each other and it's, and it's tough. Um, we need to take a look at um, who's involved in bullying. I need to see the bottom of this slide. To get to the bottom part of this slide, can we go to the escape of the top left? Mm -hmm. I'm blind, so no, you're not in there at all. That's why I'm propped up. I'm trying to put it on my leg. Um, hold on one sec. This is where I'm going to stop and do another one. I will. Thing. Oh. I can just throw in getting up and, and doing some stuff. We're going to spend some time. We're going to do this at a later date at a staff meeting um, because we feel like it's important to do, but the information, you guys know the information, it's just to um, reinforce some of, this, some of the information, and we do want you to be able to get to your classrooms, and, and it's a good chunk of time. Um, and so when we do this bullying circle exercise, um, at a later date, you guys will um, will be pulling some of this other information. Um, Effects of being bullied: you have lower self-esteem, depression, anxiety. Maybe the students that you see that are having, you know, some kind of issues. They're they're not talking, or they they start to withdraw at busy transitional times. It might be where, because you said when and where are transitional times, it could be that is the place something's happening to them. Someone's giving them body <coughs> language, which Jeffers really hit on it. I think you may have had some of that going on last year in your class. Um, that <coughs> some body language across the room, like, no, you know, no way, you're not going to do that to me. Um, and the, the words are spoken later when no one's around. 
Um, of course, absenteeism and lower school achievement, we all know are the typical ones that I would identify. And oftentimes, the anxiety goes along with that absenteeism. You know, we have a lot of kids that, because of their, their anxiety, they I have a headache, I have a stomachache, I don't feel good, I can't go to school. And, and it, they just compound and build on each other. And then, of course, if it gets very bad, we have all seen in the news, unfortunately, not only thoughts of suicide, but suicide that's been completed and carried out. Um, illness, they literally feel sick to their stomach. They don't want to show up. They don't want to be here. I'm just going to change this view really fast. Can I just do normals? And um, go to slideshow and start from current slide. Yes, ma'am. Back to the left. When we look at um, our answers <coughs> there, these are characteristics of the kids that are bullied. Um, and you guys hit on a um, number <coughs> of these, but those that are being bullied often have a low self esteem. Okay? Um, there you go. Um, sorry. Um, they're usually passive. Passive or aggressive. There are those quiet kids. Um, they're submissive. I said uh, aggressive. Submissive or passive. There are those quiet kids. There's the, there are those kids that don't usually make waves and they try to blend in. You know, um, back in the day, you know, girls were called wildflowers when they were those submissive, mm -hmm. passive girls. But they were often those girls that didn't get asked to dance or didn't get. You know, and those. If, when you picture that, picture those kinds of those kind of kids. Kids with disabilities, special needs, and health problems are often victims. Um, they're easy targets. Um, they're those kids that, with that imbalance of power, can't often fight back. Um, and when I say fight, I don't mean physically. I mean just stand up for themselves. Kids that have weight problems, those types of kids. You know, and we have that happening more and more. So we have more of those kids, and therefore, that's a whole other population. And then you have the kids that are lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, transgender, just kids that are struggling with their identity. Sometimes you may have a kid that people think are that way because you have a male that's a little effeminate, or you have a real tomboy, and it's not even close to being a fact in their life. They're just different kids. Um, weapons. Kids, they, they tend to carry weapons. And uh, when you look at, you guys know this, when you look at kids really early on, if you have these kids with conduct disorders that, you know, that are um, kind of in your face, oppositional, defiant kids, um, <coughs> you start to see a pattern early on. And if it's not addressed early enough, It continues. So these kids would have this continued pattern of behavior, and it goes on even after school many times. Um, in the OBA study, they found that bullies were four times more likely um, to have three or more convictions by the age of 24. I'm 
know about you guys, but 24 is really young. Mm -hmm. a lot of times they're afraid of that power person mm -hmm. turning on them and, and That's right. them turning into being bullied as well so they don't want to like rock the boat. That's right. Um, this is, I'm going to go over this but this is part of an activity that we'll be doing at a later date. Um, when, um, when you look here, this is our victim. <coughs> onlooker is the person that's just looking. They don't, they're not for this bullying, they're not against this bullying, they're just kind of existing. Okay? Um, you have your possible defenders. Kids and adults that they don't like it, think they ought to help, but have no clue what to do and how to intervene. Okay? And then you have the defenders. These are the kids, the adults that are going to step up and say, this isn't okay, and we're going to do something to stop it. We're going to support that bullied student. Okay. <clears throat> so um, when we talk about um, some things that can happen, you um, might see some gradual changes in the view of the bullied student. Um, you might see the weakening happen and the aggression, the decreased sense of individual responsibility. And that that's sort of giving a, a recap of some activities that we will be doing on our next staff meeting. When you think of that bullying circle that you look at, the whole the whole thing is to take these, you've got your defenders over here, is to sort of move the circle this way. If you can move those people that just are kind of sitting on the fence, don't care one way or the other, to at least to start to engage to care. Might not know what to do, but have thought this yeah. isn't okay. Then you can start the gradual shift of changing the school climate. And that's kind of where we're, what we're looking at and where we're headed. 